A bomb exploded early this morning in the Pentagon, and left-wing terrorists telephoned newspapers to say they were responsible. At midday, the Associated Press got a phone call from a man saying he was with the Weather Underground and that bombs would explode at the Departments of Interior and Agriculture and the Smithsonian before the day was out. People calling themselves members of the Weather Underground last night planted bombs in federal office buildings in Washington and Oakland, California. Credit for the Capitol bombing was claimed in a letter received by the Associated Press today signed by the Weather Underground. The explosion destroyed one of the Pentagon's 140 women's restrooms and blasted out a wall on the fourth floor. They estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill. From the front lines of the information war, it's Alex Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now into the second hour of this worldwide broadcast. And I've got to hand it to him, uh, joining us here on the 20th day of January 2015 on this Tuesday. Bill Ayers, you can say what you want about him. He is uh, more than happy to go out and debate people that I guess uh, he disagrees with. And he's the former head of the Weather Underground, distinguished professor of education and senior university scholar at the University of Illinois at Chicago. I'm not going to go over uh, all the things that he's been uh, involved in. Ayers has written extensively about social justice, democracy and education, the cultural context of schooling and teaching as an essential intellectual, ethical, and political enterprise. He is a former vice president of the Curriculum Division of the American Educational Research Association, a member of the executive committee of AERA Council. Now, his articles have appeared in the Harvard Educational Review. I'm not going to go over all of it. BillAyers.org. And I think what I want to do today is just let him have the floor the first three, four, or five minutes and say what he has to say because uh, we were reached out to first by some of his people and, and I'm glad this, uh, this discussion or debate is, is now finally happening. They wanted to talk about Common Core, education, things like that. That's fine. I want to get into Obama and uh, the legacy. I mean, I know Ayers was his mentor. I think Obama even lived with him for a while and he can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and so, I mean, is, is Obama the messianic socialist leader they thought would come, or, or, or will that be another? Uh, 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 I mean, was Mao the Messiah? Was it Lenin? Was it Stalin? I want to understand this. Uh, so Bill Ayers joins us. We'll also ask him about Larry Grathwall, uh, the FBI informant, and, and that clip you just heard. You know, does he say that's true, or is that not true? So Bill Ayers, thank you so much for coming on with us today. Again, BillAyers.org. Thank you very much. Well, where do you want to start? Well, let me correct a couple of things. One, I don't have any people who could have reached out to you because I'm just a retired professor and I write and I um, take care of my grandchildren. But well, I, how did you end up getting on the show? Because I just remember months ago. Yeah, I, no I have no idea. Somebody for, called me and said, would you do it? And I said, sure. Um, that's number one. Number two, I was never uh, the leader of the Weather Underground. I was one of the people who founded the faction within Students for a Democratic Society that became the Weather Underground. Number three, I was never a mentor to Barack Obama. He certainly never lived with me. He was a guy around the neighborhood. He's somebody I knew for many years, and I know it's been a big um, trope uh, among some people on the right that somehow uh, Barack Obama is not what he appears. He's got this black nationalist minister, Jeremiah Wright. He's got this Palestinian friend, and he's got me, who apparently ghost wrote his books. All of that is false. Um, it's all silly. And if you just take a minute to think about it, it's somewhat ridiculous. So do you want to talk about Obama, the past, history, education? Where do you want to begin, Alex? Well, first off, because uh, I don't want to get sidetracked on my minutia, I think you were here in town a while back. Uh, from memory, and then one in... What town are you in? Uh, Austin, Texas. Yeah, I was in Austin not so long ago. And I think it was one of the people that brought you then that contacted us and said, hey, would you want to debate him? And we're like, oh, yeah, that's going to happen. So so, so that's cleared up there. Oh, okay, all right, good. But, but all of that aside here, then let me just start with communism itself, because most communists say they're socialist, but then when you get around them in person, they, they start telling you about violent overthrows and the plan to take over. Do you endorse the type of communism we saw 
uh, in Russia, in China, or, or how would you really describe yourself? Well, the answer to your question is no. Um, but, you know, I've been a person who my whole life as an educator, I've opposed the notion of labeling people in a simple minded way. But yes, I am opposed to capitalism. I think capitalism is a predatory system. I think it's a system that leads to racism, exploitation, etc. So yes, I'm anti capitalist. And I am in favor of participatory democracy, which has been true my entire adult life. And that includes global democracy, and it includes economic democracy. So yes, all of those things are true. I wouldn't, if you want to put a label on me, it's kind of complicated because I would say on the First Amendment, I'm a fundamentalist. I am fundamentally in favor of the First Amendment. On the question of, of the economy, I tend towards socialism of a democratic nature. In terms of the government, I'm more of an anarchist or a left libertarian than anything else. So it's hard to put a single label and say, well, this is what you represent. No, it's not true, but I am definitely, I believe that we need more democracy in any democracy, the solution to our problems is more democracy, more participation. So that's what I fight for. Let's come at it from this angle then. Have you changed or how have your views changed since you were one of the core people in the Weather Underground versus 2015? Well, I mean, I'm now 70 years old. So of course I've changed. I change every day as you do. And all of us change. But in terms of fundamental values, I am deeply opposed to war. I'm deeply opposed to imperialism. I'm deeply opposed to white supremacy. I've been an ally of and fighter for the black freedom movement and for anti-colonial struggles. So in that sense, I haven't changed. Um, I think the wars that we're involved in now are catastrophic, not just for the rest of the world, but for America itself. And I think that we should I, in that sense, I don't know where you stand on any of these issues. I've never talked to you. I've never, uh, you know, read anything you've written. I've never heard your show. But I would, I'm wondering, are you closer to Rand Paul when it comes to militarism, or are you closer to John McCain? Oh, I'd be Ron Paul. So, so you've got Ron Paul over on the libertarian end. You've got his son, unfortunately, moving towards the middle. And you've got John McCain completely mentally ill and insane. Well, exactly. So in that sense, we have a point of unity, because I think we should call, close all foreign military bases, as Rand Paul does. I think that we should downsize the Pentagon by about 90 percent. Uh, I think we should stop the war industry. I think we should stop arming the, the dictators and petty fascists all over the world. I think we should become a nation among nations, not the uber nation, not the controller of everything. So in that sense, Alex, we've already found a point of unity. What is your view of Barack Obama then? I've always had the same view of Barack Obama as long as I've known him. I've known him for a long, long time. Barack Obama, as he said of himself in the 2008 campaign, and as he said, as he's defined himself all through his political life, he says of himself, I'm a moderate, middle of the road, pragmatic, compromising politician. That's who he said he is. That's who he is. The right wing looked at him and said, no, he's not that. What he is instead is a secret Muslim who pals around with terrorists and has socialist ideas. I have yet to see a socialist idea come out of Barack are you, Obama. Are you kidding? He's talking about free... Community just, college and open let borders? Say, let me just say, the left wing looked at Obama and said, I think he's winking in my direction. But it wasn't true. Obama is a moderate, middle of the road, pragmatic politician. That's who he said he was. That's who he is. Now sure. he has a record for seven years. You can examine his record. You don't have to. Sure. Uh, hey, Bill Ayers. Bill Ayers yeah. is our guest, Professor Ayers. Look, very good tactics about getting a point of unity. Why, if you were a Green Beret in a village with the village elders having a debate, you'd find that first point of unity, common ground. In a month, you'd have them fighting for you. And I understand that. But, but you're not a Green Beret. You fight for a different yeah. army. Who, who funds you? Because I've read you're connected to the Ford Foundation, Carnegie, and others. Have you ever oh. got any funding from those guys? Never, and I don't even know what that means. Who funds me? I'm a retired professor. I live modestly like other retired professors. I'm not sure what you You're mean. saying there's not a CIA program back to the 50s to fund liberation theology that I know you're fully aware of at university campuses. I, I, I hear your paranoia eking through, but I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I, liberation theology has nothing to do with campuses. It's a movement within the Catholic Church. Is it a left-wing movement in the Catholic Church? Yes, it is. Does it come out of Brazil? It does. Does Pope Francis, to some extent, uh, 
is he some extent influenced by that? Apparently he is. Oh, boy. Uh, that has to do with me. Are you excited about Pope Francis and his uh, liberation <laughs> theology? It's hard for me to get excited about a pope. Uh, I know that for those of you who are Catholic, he's infallible, so I guess the Catholics must be excited about him. I think that when he says, who am I to judge, and when he opens himself to the possibility of greater freedom for women, I think those are good things. And, of course, carbon taxes for George Soros, though. I, I'm not sure what that means, Alex. I mean, I know you've got the, a big paranoid background that's somewhere bubbling up, but I don't I understand. thought you don't know who I am. Hold on a minute. A big I paranoid background. Mao killed, killed 84 million people, according to the Chinese government. The CIA says 60 million. Are you saying that I shouldn't be worried about communism? I didn't say that at all. You said something about George Soros. I don't know anything about George Soros. So all right, let me ask you this. Drawing on. I don't know what you're drawing on. So You know yourself. nothing about George Soros. I, I said, when you say this is a George Soros connection to Pope Francis, I don't know what you're no, talking about. No, I wasn't saying that. I was about to get into asking you about George Soros, who yeah. is funding liberation theology. Does George Soros support liberation theology? I have no idea. I don't know much about liberation theology, and I know nothing about George Soros except what I read occasionally in the newspapers. Well, I mean, community organizing, stirring up groups, uh, that's basically domestic liberation theology. Reverend Wright was a liberal. Dude, slow down. Community that's liberation theology. Community organizing is stirring up groups? What's wrong with community organizing? Well, no, that, that's a name. Radicalizing people has then been named community organizing and is funded by the big billionaires to destabilize. Well, listen, I want you to have a counterpoint to that. When we come back, Bill Ayers is our guest. It is very interesting. BillAyers.org. Stay with us. <laughs> Bill Ayers is our guest. This is a short six-minute segment, a long 18-minute segment's coming up so we can really get into a serious discussion. If he's up for it, we'll open the phones up so I guess supporters and detractors can call in. Here's where I stand, uh, Professor Ayers. I don't know if you've read None Dare Call It Conspiracy by Gary Allen. I read that book back when I was like 14 years old. Since then, um, pretty much all of it has been proven to be accurate from my perspective, where ultra-rich crony capitalists fund socialist and communist movements, but also fascist movements, because they like to deal with command and control systems with domesticated populations. And I think that history's shown that collectivism delivers hell on earth and forced work camps. Now, that's why I disagree with you fundamentally. Uh, and I guess you believe that we have a real form of capitalism, and you disagree with that. I don't believe we have capitalism. I believe we have fascism sitting on top of a socialist management system and that the left-right paradigm that's taught is a fraud. What do you say? I have no idea what you're talking about, but I think that I agree with you. I'm against forced work camps. I'm against slavery. I'm against nuclear holocaust. I'm against military bases abroad. That I understand. I don't know what you're talking about, about uh, crony, I, I know finance capitalism is one of the great dangers in the world today, but I don't know what you mean about them funding socialists. What socialists have they funded? And if you say, well, they funded Barack Obama, I see no evidence that Barack Obama is a socialist in any sense at all. It's been declassified that the CIA did indeed put Mao Zedong into power in 1949. Uh, where did you find that? That's fascinating. Uh, History Channel, but it was previously declassified. Uh, you know, I've never heard of that, but that's fascinating. And Mao Zedong is no hero of mine, so there we are. I mean, y y you've got these great uh, theories, but I don't know. Uh, we're not talking the same language because I don't know what you're talking well, about. Well, exactly. You're speaking <laughs> academia speech where you're this nice, mild-mannered guy, uh, and you're there with your uh, significant other, Bernadine Dorn. I guess you guys were never involved in any bombings or anything, right? No, that's not true. We were involved in trying to stop the murder of 6,000 people a week by our government that dragged on for 10 years. We conducted, we, I was involved in nonviolent sit-ins. I was involved in all kinds of tactics that were legal. And eventually we did turn to, um, uh, to what I would call uh, extreme vandalism. We destroyed property to raise a screaming uh, opposition to the murder of 6,000 people. You didn't bomb police officers or blind police officers? Not at all. Nothing like that ever happened. I know it's part of the narrative of the right, but it's just not true. Really? So Weatherman bombs never wounded police? I'm sorry? Weatherman bombs never wounded police? 
Never. Because you know what I'm going to do with all this. We're going to take this yeah, live interview and then take clips of what you're saying and then, and then show them throughout. That's the whole point. I, I don't know what you're talking about because we were involved. I was underground for 11 years. The Weather Underground was very active between 1970 and 75. Our government, people like John McCain, killed 6,000 people a week for 10 years, and we engaged in illegal, some would say, you know, ill-advised, crossing lines of legality and maybe common sense. We involved in it, were involved in extreme acts of vandalism to destroy property to raise a screaming alarm against sure. the war. They claim that Tim McVeigh was angry about Waco and blew up that building. I, I, the evidence shows it's a false flag to blame the... Uh, right, but but expanding on that, uh, I don't know what you're talking about about Waco. I'm not sure what you're I'm asking you. Do you think it was okay what McVeigh did? Absolutely not. He murdered people, innocent people, in the federal building. Absolutely not. We never did that, and we never murdered anybody. So that's uh, Mc, what McVeigh did was horrendous. Was Larry Grathwald? Uh, I heard he tried to debate you. Have you ever debated him? No, and never. And he's passed away now. But Larry Grathwell was a pathological liar, a paid informant of the FBI. I don't know if you're a fan of the FBI, but Larry Grathwell was paid to lie. And he, none of what he said was true or has ever been proven to be true. Well, I'm not a fan of a lot of stuff the FBI has done, but really? it's pretty much a creature of whatever, whoever runs the Justice Department and the well, White so House. But, but well, I'm certainly not a fan of communist. So Larry Grathwell is a creature of the Justice Department, correct? Of the Justice Department he was under, but he, so I, I think there's good people and bad people in there is what I'm saying. Department, or do you not like that Justice Department? I believe that when he, when you guys recruited him and, and reportedly tried to get him to, to, to train you in military tactics, I mean, I think it was good to stop violence. None of that is true. Larry Grathwell hung around SDS. Everybody thought he was a cop. It turns out he wasn't a cop. He was simply a paid informant paid to lie and that's what he did none of what he said ever resulted in anything so the fact that he tried to make a second career out of himself is ludicrous he was not a truthful person he never told the truth and he never stood for anything except let me get a little money to lie right. to the justice we gotta department. go to break come back you can finish responding to that and give us your view on education common core and more bill .org. i'm alex jones thought Bill Ayers is with us till the end of the hour. He's got to go at 50 after now, or maybe he always did. We'll have time to take a few phone calls at 800-259-9231. I'd like to hear from some Bill Ayers supporters. We don't screen your calls, just your name and where you're calling from and how you're listening. You support this guy, I'd love to hear from you. Or if you've got a serious question and don't support him, it's wide open, 800-259-9231. Look, I don't want to waste our time here with a he said, she said. I go to your website, BillAyers.org, and there's a red star on a black background up there. It looks pretty Maoist to me. Uh, you say you didn't like Mao. Was Larry Grathwald wrong that you guys followed a Maoist cultural revolution style system at the Weatherman? Yeah, he was wrong and he was lying. But the red star on the black background is also the signet for Heineken beer and Macy's. So be careful what you worry about. But here's the oh, thing. Oh, come on, <laughs> man. You're a famous commie. For just no, admit it, you love linen. First of all, I'm not famous. Secondly, I don't know what you meant when you said Bill Ayers supporters call in. We haven't had one substantive exchange, you and me. So I don't know what one would think to be a supporter. You mean if somebody has read one of my books and has something to say about it? We haven't talked about anything substantive. Okay, well, you're, again, you're setting and defining things like MSNBC saying, parents, your kids don't belong to you. Let me ask when you this question. Do you support abortion? Wait, when did I say that? When did I say parents don't belong to their kids? I said MSNBC said that. No, they did not. What are you talking about? I they no said we need to break through this view that, you know, kids belong to their parents and that they actually belong to the wider community. I'm not, you know, I'm so bewildered about what you're talking about. Let's talk about the question of whether kids belong to their parents. If a kid is being, let's just talk about that. In general, I think, yes, indeed, children and their parents and their families are sacred, sacrosanct, absolutely. But if a parent is raping the child, the community has an interest in stopping that. Do you agree with that? Yes, so you agree with Melissa Harris-Perry? I'm not sure. Or you disagree with her? Wait a minute, about what? Well, that's what her statement about the kids. The point is, we know all communist <laughs> systems try to take over the kids. Free question. If a parent is raping a child, 
Does the community have an interest in the you? local community, but not the central communitarian? Okay, that's fine. I'm with you. The local community has an interest, but but so I mean, I'm not sure what the big distinction is. But you and I then agree, the child and the parent sure. and the family is sacrosanct unless something horrendous. Unless we need a. a, a what do you think about Obama wanting a domestic security force just as big and just as strong as our military and having youth brigades chanting his name? I'm, uh, is, I didn't know he was doing that, but I'm opposed to all domestic security forces. I'm, I'm opposed to the U.S. military. I'm opposed to the massive militaristic nature of the society, including surveillance, mass incarceration, uh, sure. the militarization of the police, all of that I'm opposed to. What do you think, Bill Ayers, of uh, our government with NATO, or maybe you disagree, uh, arming al-Qaeda, renaming them ISIS to turn them loose on Syria and murder hundreds of thousands? You know, I, I, I've always been opposed to the U.S. arming al-Qaeda, which they did in their fight against the Soviet Union. The United States, the al-Qaeda is a creation of the United States. Yes. And now they've created ISIS, and all these invasions, including the, the Bush-Cheney invasion of Iraq, have been mindless and stupid, and they've caused nothing but grief in the world and in the United States. Well, I'll say this. We have a big video out today that's going viral where we expose American Sniper as a giant hoax. So just so you know where I'm coming from, I attack everything I see as baloney. So I agree, there's right-wing tyranny, there's left-wing tyranny. All I, I attack everything I see as baloney as well. And right now I'm feeling like you're the biggest baloney here. I don't understand. What, do I support Melissa Harris Perry? What is what is that? I didn't even know what you're talking about. Well, that's about. like the mouth of Sauron, MSNBC. You're like a real celebrity over there and so that's the kind of stuff they're saying you're absolutely mistaken i am not a celebrity anywhere but certainly not on MSNBC. that is pure bull you are almost like a christ-like figure in the circles of hardcore show, commies show me show me where show me some evidence of that alex that's so fascinating i feel like i'm just sitting here in my home trying to write something this morning i'm suddenly having a conversation with you and you're bringing up these gigantic categoricals i have no idea what you're referring sure, to. sure let me just play uh, melissa harris perry for you in a promo they still air they've been airing this for three years uh here it is so part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. Once it's everybody's responsibility and not just the households, then we start making better investments. So do you agree with that or disagree with the lean forward Marxist Leninist uh, statement? <laughs> I, I only got a little piece of that because I was talking, but... I'll, I'll once again give you the example and you tell me if you agree. No, no, we've already been over that. Let me ask you this key question. Are you aware that IBM and the eugenicist movement funded much of the modern left and Margaret Sanger, who got awards from Hitler, gave awards from Hitler, and the whole great society was a plan to take over black communities and exterminate them because they're, quote, weeds? Well, I know that the eugenicist movement and Margaret Sanger and Hitler and a large part of the American society were eugenicists and, and academics were eugenicists, and I think it's all part of a very heinous part of, of, of the human, of human history and the human condition. Well, I agree with you. And from our research, the left represents the core vestigial movement and at its base, it's eugenical. Maybe you never got that high in the power structure, but that's what it is. I had no idea, but uh, this is news to me. I have no idea what you're referring to. I don't know that the left, I mean, to me, the, the Hitler and the right wing uh, a notion of racial superiority and white supremacists sure. has never been, um, you know, a core value of of the left. Um, I, but uh, so, again, I don't I don't accept your premise. I don't know what you're referring to. The reason some of what I say to you, you know, about makes sense and other stuff you say sounds like total baloney is because. I am outside the box, and I'm trying to transcend all these labels. Hitler called himself a national socialist, but That's I would true. agree with you that he had right-wing aspects, but only within the left-right paradigm. As Carol Quigley wrote, have you read Tragedy and Hope by Carol Quigley? No, I have not. That's Bill Clinton's top mentor in his words. I have no idea. He wrote an unofficial secret history for the State Department so their section chiefs could understand why they were funding fascists and communists and totalitarians, and he admits in the 1,100-page book how the whole game works. I mean, clearly, you, big corporations try to control the left and right, right? 
I don't know much about Bill Clinton, but I've never been a support in the, supporter of Bill Clinton. And so, I, you know, again, you're trying to make some connection that I'm not following. I haven't read the book. I don't know he was a Clinton's advisor. I've never been an admirer of Bill Clinton. Sure. And I'm, still not I'm trying to get at the fact that there are robber barons funding socialist and communist movements from I Arm and Hammer to, uh, you know, people like... Uh, George Soros, who just got caught spending $33 million trying to hype up the Ferguson protest. Are you aware of that? I am not. I am not. And, and George Soros, again, I know nothing about George Soros, but the idea that somehow big capitalists are funding movements that would want to overthrow them seems preposterous to me. But again, you're crashing through the, through the lies, so maybe you know something I don't know, but I don't know it. So asking me about it is if I'm an expert on it, I have no idea what you're referring to. Well, here's the deal. Uh, the, the system promotes communism or socialism as the only way to rebel against corrupt forms of capitalism. And okay. I just think that's a total fraud. And I'm sick of it. That's what I'm saying. I don't think that's true. And I don't think I think that that, uh, you know, most systems and certainly the American government hates dissent, despises dissent and does everything it can do to to ruin it, to wreck it, to reframe it. And so, no, I don't accept the, the, the terms that are given to me by the ruling class. Sure. Or by the percent. I don't accept it. Sure. Well, uh, I found that communism is historically least uh, tolerant of free speech than capitalism, though I agree capitalism is degenerating into a fascist corporatist model right now. I think that's probably true. There are all kinds of indications of fascism, including the uh, intolerance of dissent and including um, the suppression of free speech and including the linkage of corporations with government, which has gone so far that we have very little left of a participatory uh, system, very little. Uh, it's mostly controlled by big money. And big money is, I mean, you know, we fought, we yesterday there was a great celebration for voting rights and the movie Selma and so on. But the reality is that voting rights have been dismantled in this country by the wealthy. But if you notice the one-tenth of one percent that control most of the wealth in the world get their money from government deals, insider deals, government bailouts, and they're the ones pushing higher taxes on the middle class, Warren Buffett and other dirtbags, don't you know they're funding leftist foundations across the board and want a limited leftist movement to domesticate the public? I don't consider, I don't consider these foundations leftist foundations, but I do think that the Ford Foundation, the Gates Foundation, uh, the Broad Foundation, all of these people are right wing. Absolutely. So I agree with you on that. And I think that government, this is a government that supports the big finance capitalist class. There's no question in my mind that the government is run by Wall Street. That's who runs it. But so I'm saying they're creating a monopoly so you can't call it capitalist. And I'm not saying the foundations are right wing or left wing. They push fake left wing ideology as a form of domestication. I don't see any fake left wing ideology. You take the Ford Foundation. The Ford Foundation, you know, funds mostly um, horrible, controlling, racist kinds of things. I don't. I don't have anything to The Ford do. Foundation wants the open borders. What do you think of Obama acting unilaterally more and more? Not even executive orders, but just doing whatever he wants. I don't know what, again, what are you referring to? For example, open what, borders, uh, okay. the, the, the power example, plants. Uh, the, I don't think he's done anything about open borders. I think the idea, for example, of opening to Cuba, which he did unilaterally, was a good thing. I think it should have happened 50 years ago. I think the idea that somehow the United States has gained anything by by uh, trying to destroy Cuba. All that has hurt the Cuban people and isolated them from the possibility of new ideas and new developments. I think it's great that uh, that the United States now has an open door to Cuba and, and Marco Rubio can have a, a conniption fit if he wants, but it doesn't mean anything. The fact is, sure. it's, not a, it's not a danger to the United States. I think they should close Guantanamo as long as I'm talking about Cuba. I think that Guantanamo was a massive mistake uh, from the beginning. It's expensive. It's stupid. It makes no sense. Sure. Uh, it should happen. Let me do this. I want to go to some phone calls while we've got you. BillAyers.org. You can find his books and other things there. Um, but... Uh, I, I think there's a culture clash here because we're not in the controlled left or controlled right paradigm. Uh, I mean, I am a feminist in that I want women to all be trained how to use firearms. Uh, and that's right. You, you Let me guess, you don't want the citizens to have weapons, right? No, that's not true. But I'm a feminist in the sense that I think women should be paid equally for equal work and have the right to control their Sure, bodies. should women be able to own guns? Oh, absolutely. Why oh, good. Not? So you're not for taking the guns like Chicago's yeah. done?
Never have been. I don't know what you're referring to. So you're an old-fashioned type commie. You believe in raising that AK-47. Either we should go one of two directions. We should either disarm everybody, starting with the most massive military establishment ever established on Earth, and that's the U.S. military. We can disarm them, disarm the police, disarm everybody, or we should go the other direction and arm the homeless, which is, I think would be a great thing. I think there are a lot of good people among the homeless. Why not have them all get a little stuck? I think there? there's a lot. I think you actually you find mainly, and I'm sad for homeless, I try to help them, but most of them are schizophrenic drug addicts. Well, good Lord. Uh, and why aren't they getting help? I bet you, I bet you ten thousand dollars. You can come to Austin with me, and and if ninety percent of the homeless aren't mentally ill people dumped out of facilities, who I feel sorry for, or aren't total drug addicts, I'll give you ten grand. I mean, I really, I mean, everybody knows they're mainly mentally ill. Would we count on you to be the diagnostician? I'd be a little suspicious just from the last. No, we can uh, bring like three random people with us. Just, I mean, if the person's muttering to themselves and talking to themselves. I mean, obviously they're. Completely out of their minds. I mean, you you know most of the homeless you people. Mutter, listen, you've been muttering to yourself for the last forty five minutes. But, but <laughs> good one. But, but listen, Alex. The fact Should I is, be locked up like the Soviets would do? Because <laughs> am I mentally ill? If they if they are mentally ill on the streets of Austin, shouldn't they get some help from the community? Shouldn't we allow them to get treatment? Absolutely. I'm all for that. But you notice the welfare system always gets sucked up by the corporations. I want to go to some phone calls while we've got you here. We don't have you very long, maybe five, six more minutes. We appreciate Bill Ayers joining us. I got to say, I agree with more of what Bill Ayers says than what Obama says, which is frightening. <laughs> Bill Ayers says, arm the women. Absolutely. Arm, arm them. The yeah. Arm the don't forget, arm the homeless. Then they yeah. won't need the arm everybody. That's right. Uh, I say arm the police. And just everybody can have weapons. And if they have tanks, I have tanks. Buddy. I, I got to have my guns so when the commies come. Let's talk to Gary. Gary in Pennsylvania, you're up first. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Hi, Bill. I just wanted to ask you uh, just a quick question, maybe get some a few bullet points on uh, what your definition in your own words and opinion of the difference between socialism and communism, just of what you believe in. Well, you know, I don't think, you know, for me, if you read, uh, if you read, for example, the Communist Manifesto, there's a lot in there that you, that you would find you agree with. The Communist Manifesto is not a plan to, for, for state communism. It's not a plan to overthrow the government. It's not a playbook for communist revolution. What it is is mainly a praise song for capitalism. It basically says in the historical sweep of nations, the, the 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 rise of capitalism is the most productive force that's ever been made, and it's going to exhaust itself. I think that the communism of the 20th century was catastrophic for humanity. I think the socialism of the 21st century, 20th century, and 21st century in Europe is inadequate and in many ways feeds the corporate the corporate culture. I think we need participatory democracy, and that includes participatory economic democracy. That is. Yeah. Is a community Socialism is a stagnant, rotten cesspit that lets special interests control big pools of money. That's why big money always is backing limited socialism. And I'm glad you just basically admitted that it's all nothing but a corporate welfare system that then controls the population. Uh, Gary, thank you. In Europe, yes, Alex, that's what I said. Yeah, and no, it, 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 it's... it's never asked me that before, I don't think you should be surprised. If you've ever read anything I've written... I write about these kinds of things all the time. Well, folks can read your website. Let's rush to some more calls here. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Ray in Iowa. Go ahead. You're on the air with the Grand Weatherman. Go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Alex, thank you, sir, for taking my call. Yeah, go ahead. You're on the air with the Grand Poobah. Well, I, want, I had a question for Mr. Bell Ayers. I wanted to find out if he had ever seen a, uh, a film by Joel Gilbert uh, called Dreams of My Real Father, and if so, uh, what was his uh, take on that film, and how did he feel about it? I've not seen it, and I've never heard of it. Frank Marshall Davis, did you know him? I never knew Frank Marshall Davis. I read about him in the New York Times. So Barack never told you that was his pappy? I, you know, I knew Barack Obama about as well as thousands and thousands of other people. It's not that we, we weren't intimate friends. We never shared a milkshake with two straws, never. All right, well, I went, nobody ever said you did that. You'd have to but be okay, cuddling to be doing that. Close friends, I was not. You never man. dated Barack Obama. I never dated him, right? Okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go to Jeff in Tennessee. You're on the air uh, with Bill Ayers. Go ahead. We got two more calls, and we'll let his his lordship go. Go ahead. 
Okay, hey guys, uh, good to talk to you, Mr. Ayers. Uh, just a question as far as uh, listening to you talk on the radio. I mean, there's things that we definitely have in common, um, but there's a lot of things we don't have in common, and I think uh, would help me understand if just hypothetically Rand Paul and Hillary Clinton are running for office, which one would you vote for, and what would be your reasonings behind standing behind one or the other? I wouldn't vote for either one of them, and I'm not a big fan of the of the Republicans and the Democrats. In fact, I don't think, if you look at history, I don't think that the great man or the great woman is what changes history. If you look at Lyndon Johnson, he was never part of the black freedom movement, but he passed the most far reaching civil rights legislation since reconstruction. Franklin Roosevelt was never part of the labor movement and Abraham Lincoln never belonged to an abolitionist party. What changes history is movements on the ground. I'm more interested in people being active in trying to engage with each other to change the terms of the discussion. The people are the resistance. We agree on that. Uh, then, then, then who's president? Who's president? You notice, if you go back even in this century, Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican, they're pretty much the same. They're not completely the same, but they're pretty much the same. Well, who would you share a milkshake with, Hillary Clinton or uh, Rand Paul? You know, I, I, I find Hillary Clinton, I could never vote for Hillary Clinton. She's in the pocket of Wall Street. She's a militaristic uh, candidate. And those are the two things that matter most to me. Uh, Rand Paul, I agree with him more around the question of militarism, but he also is, uh, is a Wall Street favorite. So, um, I, you know, neither one of them, really. I'd like to share a milkshake with you in Austin. All right. You know, if you come down here, we will share a milkshake. Okay. With a, a, a strawberry milkshake together. Let's go ahead and take two more calls and we'll let you go. I appreciate your time. This is a ridiculous debate, folks. But we'll get him in person down here. We'll waterboard him. That's what patriots do. We'll get the answers. I'm joking. You just waterboard people? What? It's a joke. I don't support waterboarding. Even yeah. though Dick Cheney, you know, I'm a big fan of Dick Cheney, though. I'm so shocked. I'm joking. All right, let's go ahead and talk to... Um, Let's go ahead and talk to Patrick and then Kevin, and then that's it. I'll have to get to Clint and others because we got to go here, and our guest has got to go. We're holding him over. Patrick, you're on the air with Bill Ayers. Yes, hello, Mr. Ayers. Uh, yes. I'm just curious. There's a lot of this discussion going back and forth, and it's just, I constantly hear the same thing coming out of your mouth is, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not familiar. I don't know. I don't know. I guess my question is, what is it do you, that you do know? And obviously, it should be education. Um, but I question that because you look at the current state of our educational system is absolutely just blasphemously ignorant and disgusting. Is that something that you advocate as being appropriate? Or do you find there's a better model than what this public system is doing to demolish the brains of these young children? Well, I, I very much have been a, a person who's opposed the, the status quo in education, where I think we could start in a lot of different places we could start. But one of the things is public education very much serves the people who are privileged. So you go to a city like Winnetka, north of Chicago, those kids get a great education. Go to Chicago, those kids get a rotten education. Why? Because the education for the people who are pulling the strings is an education for initiative, courage, imagination, and entrepreneurship. The education the kids in Chicago get is about obedience and conformity. Obedience well, that's true, but shouldn't people in Chicago themselves change that? To say yeah. some small, wealthy town <laughs> shouldn't use its own money for its kids is, yeah. is, is just fundamentally theft. Alex, you asked the question, and the answer I'll give you is yes. Shouldn't the people in Chicago change it? Yes. There you go. So, I mean, I want people to do good. And, I mean, certainly there's an equity, but there will always be in any attempt to change it by just taking money creates a new evil. Patrick? And, you know, again, I never said anything about taking money. Here's what I would say. In a democracy, whatever the most privileged and wisest parents have for their children should be the baseline of what we want for all children. But we're not a democracy. We're a republic. We can't have two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner. <laughs> well... The fact is that we want all kids, I want all kids to get a decent education, and a decent education is not an education for obedience and conformity. Do you like Common Core? No, I do not like Common Core. And the, and the hugest thing that's hideous about Common Core is it goes along with the corporate reform agenda yeah. of reducing education to a, a simple-minded uh, score on a standardized test. Well, I agree with you because... 
testing, more testing. That is the, an anathema to education. Well, yeah, the left def uh, uh, defends it all day, but you're actually right. Bill and Melinda Gates came up with it as a brainwashing system. It is a corporatist thing, and the right wing can't square that, that their precious corporations want a bunch of dumb zombies. Wait a minute. When you say the left supports it, who are you talking about? I think you've got some magical mindset somewhere. Am I the left? I don't support it. So who's the left that you're referring to that loves common The mainline yeah. Democrats that can't tie yeah, their shoelaces but, and think that Martin Luther King is an astronaut. But I just said to you, I thought that leading Democrats are idiots and they're like leading Republicans. In fact, we have one political party in this country in charge. It's called the Repulsocrats. The Repulsocrats. All right. Well, I, uh, I do uh, well, I appreciate you joining us. I'm late. But thank you for talking to me, and I hope to talk to you in Austin someday. If you come down to Austin, we'll host you in studio. Okay, and really? even though it's evil and capitalist, we'd pay for your hotel room and, uh, and the strawberry milkshakes. I don't think there's anything wrong with paying for the hotel room. We'll talk again. We'll, well. Put some, we'll put some vodka in the milkshake. I, I have no idea. We'll, we'll, we'll get you drunk, the truth serum. What is that in Latin that, that wine makes you tell the truth? I have no idea. You want to have a drinking contest and sell tickets? No, I don't drink, but thanks anyway. Uh, me neither. Vino Veritas. Have a good one. You too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. Well, that's that's the hardcore commie trying to, ch trying to, trying to charm us. And, oh, I don't know this. Oh, I don't know that.